Hey everyone, Old Man Sim here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm diving into the world of JRPGs. JRPGs are in my top two of favorite gaming genres of all time. I love getting lost in the stories, traveling to far off lands, going on crazy adventures, all the while listening to a usual banger of a soundtrack. Today, I would love to share with you my 10 favorite JRPGs of all time. These games have not only defined the genre for me, but have also left a lasting impact on my gaming journey. So let's jump in and revisit some classic adventures that shape my love for JRPGs, in no particular order, of course. But first, while you're here, don't forget to click that thumbs up like, smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to stay notified of more gaming content. I also stream three to five days a week on all major platforms. The links are on the screen now and in the description below. Now that the shameless plug is over with, let's get back to the video. All right, everybody, let's get the easy one and the low hanging fruit out of the way at the beginning of the video. Our first JRPG I would like to talk about, of course, Final Fantasy VII. I know most people love it. I know there's some people that hate it. Shout out Fortifier, I know, overrated. And there is some aspects I understand that sentiment with. This game was a cultural phenomenon and it's easy to see why. I remember the first time I saw Cloud Spiky Hair jumping off that train, the epic, oh, epic opening sequence. It was nothing short of mind blowing. The story filled with unforgettable moments and you know that one I'm talking about and characters like Sephiroth and Aerith. Eris, Aerith, whichever one you want to say. It all left a lasting impression. The game's transition to 3D from the 2D world, its cinematic approach set new standards for RPGs. Cloud Strife's journey from a mercenary to hero, combined with the unforgettable music and deep storyline, makes it the pinnacle of JRPG greatness. In my honest opinion, One Winged Angel, the boss soundtrack when you fight Sephiroth when he's the One Winged Angel, is the greatest single gaming musical score ever made. And in my opinion, as far as music or, or boss music or whatever you want to call it, it's only rivaled by Kefka's final form in Final Fantasy VI. And since we already mentioned it, let's get it off the board as well. Final Fantasy VI. It's a game that many deem to be the best Final Fantasy of all time, and it's easy to see why. Final Fantasy VI, also known as Final Fantasy III in the US and the SNES, remains a timeless classic with its compelling narrative, rich character development, and just amazing story. Recently, I just played this game for the first time. I remember the emotional impact of the story, the depth of the characters like Terra and Locke, the unforgettable villain Kefka. Kefka was a straight psycho, man. He was just straight vicious. And who actually wins? I mean, at first he wins, but he wins and takes over the world. Like how many times does the big bad actually win? He walked so Sephiroth could run. While he doesn't possess the cool or it factor that our boy Sephiroth has, I believe there is no better pure villain, pure villain in gaming than Kefka in Final Fantasy VI. The game's music composed by Nobuo Uyumetsu. I'm sorry I butchered your name. You're gonna hear a lot of butchering this, this video. And its innovative gameplay elements have solidified its place as one of my all time favorite JRPGs. And I am so blessed that I actually played it for the first time this year. Up next, we have Skies of Arcadia. This game takes you on an aerial adventure like no other. Set in a world of floating islands and sky pirates, this game offered a sense of adventure that was incredibly immersive. With its beautiful sky pirate setting, engaged turn-based combat, I remember getting lost in the beautiful skies and engaging in thrilling airship battles. And the characters, especially Vice and Heika, were so well developed and the game's sense of wonder and exploration was truly captivating and amazing. It's a fan favorite and honestly deserves all the praise that it gets. The exploration of Skies of Arcadia and the vibrant world making an unforgettable journey. I highly recommend it if you have not played this game. The SNES and PS1 were JRPG heaven for gamers, pumping out classic after classic after classic. The Mana series is no different and is second to none. With Secret of Mana, that was my favorite of the bunch though. The real-time combat system was a game changer for me. The colorful 16-bit graphics, were awesome. They're still beautiful to this day. Then learning I could actually play a JRPG with my friends on controller two blew my mind. Once we figured this out, I spent countless hours with friends in competitive multiplayer mode, exploring dungeons and battling monsters. This game's music composed by Hiroki Ikuto, sorry, botching it again, 
is still one of my favorites, creating a nostalgic atmosphere that's hard to beat. If you haven't played it yet, you're definitely in for a treat. Coming up next, we have this Xbox 360 gem, Lost Odyssey. I love my Xbox and my Xbox 360. They're two of my favorite systems right behind the Sega Dreamcast. But anyway, this game had such a profound impact on me. It was created by some of the minds behind the original Final Fantasy games with its touching story about immortality and the passage of time. The character-driven narrative, especially through game's dreams, was incredibly moving. The classic turn-based combat, combined with its mature, poignant storytelling, set a high bar for emotional depth in RPGs. And I just, there wasn't a whole lot of JRPGs at that time on those systems. I loved them. I loved Jade Empire as well on the original Xbox. I loved the, the Coder series, like RPGs, I loved them. But I have to say Lost Odyssey was the creme de la creme. Playing it felt like I was diving into a, a beautifully crafted novel. And that's like one of the best things that you can ask for with a JRPG is that you feel like you're, you're in this world, in this mythical place. And Lost Odyssey grabbed that to a T. If you haven't played it, you're missing out. Like, like I say that a lot, but you're missing out on Lost Odyssey. And now we have another classic. And of course it comes from Square. And of course it comes on the SNES. And it's none other than Chrono Trigger. It's often hailed as one of the greatest JRPGs of all time. This 1995 classic from Square Enix features a time traveling storyline that is engaging today as it was back then. And honestly, on any given day, this game is in a top five game period for me. I played this game and beat this game so many times, playing it on the TV in my grandma's living room and just played it over and over and over and over again. And the beauty is you can beat it in the very beginning or do everything. You can beat it whenever you want to, and that's the beauty of a game like this. You had multiple endings, like I was just mentioning, time traveling that just keeps you guessing. I remember the excitement of discovering new eras from prehistoric to future and, 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 and just crazy different scenarios in the world. The character development's awesome. There's cool little plot twists and just a fantastic soundtrack by somebody I'm gonna butcher their name, Yasunori Masuda, it makes this game an absolute classic. The game wasn't too complicated. It didn't reinvent the wheel, but what it did do was tell an amazing story that was fun to play and paced perfectly. Every game can learn from this. You don't have to be overly complicated. You don't have to be crazy. You don't have to do something like super outlandish. All you have to do is make a good game, make something that we want to play and a world we want to live in. Chrono Trigger, chef's kiss. Like, I, I, like if you don't like Chrono Trigger, I, I don't know, you must not like JRPGs in my opinion. In my opinion. opinion. Coming in next is Kingdom Hearts 2. This game blends Disney magic with the expansive world of Final Fantasy in the way that only Square Enix could pull off. It was a dream come true for many fans, like just the original one alone was a dream come true. Everybody wanted to see this once they heard about it. They didn't know they wanted it, but once they heard about it and they saw it in action, that's all they ever wanted. And I enjoyed the first Kingdom Hearts. I didn't expect much from it, and I absolutely fell in love with the series. I wanted so much more. I don't know if I wanted all the things that we get now with all the raindrop, droop, drop, 3.74329, pi divided by 72, different versions of the game. Okay, I get you. I don't know if I wanted that much more, but I remember all the hype leading up to its release. We're getting a brand new Kingdom Hearts game. What more are they gonna show us? What world are we gonna see? The thrill of finally getting to explore more Disney worlds with more of the characters we love. The combat system was more refined compared to the first game. The story took some bold turns. Sora's journey through different worlds while battling the Heartless is something I still love and cherish. And when many years later, when they announced Kingdom Hearts 3, it, you know, it, it elicited all those feels. But I will say, like I alluded on a little bit, if you do play this game, if you do play the series overall, watch a bunch of YouTube videos to understand what's going on, because if not, you'll never understand what's going on. You'll never understand. That's, it's so confusing. It's the most outlandish game I've ever played, but I absolutely love it. Kingdom Hearts is an amazing series. Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3, Mwah. chef's kiss twice. All right, this one right here, partner, this one might be a little bit controversial. Moseying on in on the list, here. we have a Wild Arms 3. I was trying to do a country accent, and that, none of that worked out at all. I apologize to everybody I offended. This game stands out with its Wild West inspired setting that was a breath of fresh air in the JRPG genre. Usually you had like mythical monsters and 
all this other stuff but we actually got to go to the wild wild west and i don't mean will smith it was awesome it was like what this is cool what i remember seeing this game and i'm like what an rpg this is an rpg and it's got like this anime you know western style to it i like i have to see it i have to play it the combination of traditional turn-based combat with the western aesthetics created a unique experience something that i don't think that i've ever played since sprinkle in the captivating story of the three protagonists their growth the game's innovative tactical core system made every encounter feel strategic and engaging like this game was better than it had any right to be and maybe i'm overrating this game to many because this was my introduction to the series. I didn't play one or two, but I played three. And when I played three, it made me go back and play the other ones. I just enjoyed it. It was just so different to me. I, and I just love games in genres that I love that try to be different, you know? And, and I think that it was a nice setting. It was a really good game. And I highly recommend the entire series to everyone, but I very much so recommend Wild Arms 3. I really feel like the Super Nintendo is dominating this list. And, and I say it again, Super Nintendo PS1 was the greatest era for JRPGs in my opinion. Here, we have another SNES banger from the minds of Square Enix. Of course, SNES, Square Enix, here we go again. We have Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. I still remember the excitement of seeing Mario in a fully fledged RPG setting. It was developed by Square Enix and Nintendo. This game combined the best of both worlds. Mario's charm with Square Enix's JRPG expertise. The dialogue was hilarious, the combat was engaging, and the game introduced me to the concept of timed hits that I didn't know that I needed. It just press this button at a certain time and your attack's even more powerful? Heck yeah, I need it. It's a game that perfectly blends humor with adventure. The game gave a lot of depth to characters in the Mario world that we grew up with, showing sides of them we didn't know existed and team ups we never saw coming. The only other time we saw this was on something like the Super Mario cartoons or the Super Mario Super Show. I have beaten this game multiple times from my youth to my age now, whether it be on my own or on stream, and every time I absolutely love the game and fall in love with it again. This game was the precursor to the Paper Mario series, which is also heralded as some of the best RPGs of all time. For the longest time, people wanted a remake of this classic, and in 2023, they got exactly what they wanted. When Nintendo released the remake, Super Mario RPG. Now, no matter how you play it, whether it be the remake or the original, I highly recommend playing this RPG classic that many never saw coming. And lastly, but definitely not least, we have a game from my favorite system of all time. I've said it once and I'll say it again, the Dreamcast it is my favorite system of all time. I just love the controller, I love the games, I love everything about it. It was just amazing to me and I wish it actually had a chance to survive in the world and that maybe came out a year later or you know a year sooner something that would have done to make it survive but from that era we have grandia 2. and it's just very pertinent because a friend of mine fortifier which i mentioned before he's playing grandia 1 right now through an override that i played and i just it brings me back so many great memories of those games grandia 1 and grandia 2 were absolutely amazing i played grandia 1 on the playstation i played grandia 2 on the dreamcast and i have the sake of saturn to play grandia 1 on the on the on one real-time battle systems way ahead of its time every encounter felt dynamic and exciting ryudo the main character was a memorable anti-hero with a sarcastic edge and the game's soundtrack oh my gosh the same game soundtrack composed by noriyuku oh wadari uh, i apologize again but that soundtrack still gives me chills and even if you go back to number one, Grandia, Grandia 1 could have easily been in this list as well. Like just the way the game moves and the camera and the feel and the music, like a lot of that carried over to this game as well. The fantasy world, the intricate story kept me hooked from start to finish. This game is a true hidden gem of the Dreamcast era and is a must play. And the thing that to me puts Grandia 2 over Grandia 1, like Grandia 1 is cool, but Grandia 2 is just odd. It's just one of the strangest RPGs ever and it takes a lot of weird risks so i understand if a lot of people here like grandia one better than two but grandia two is absolutely amazing and maybe it's dreamcast bias i'm not sure but either way i highly recommend you try out the grandia series i've only played the first two i believe there's three of them at least throughout the grandia series like trust me you will not want to put this game down and there you have it everybody 
my top 10 favorite JRPGs of all time. These games have shaped my gaming experience and love of JRPGs and left me with countless memories. What are your favorite JRPGs? Where do you agree with me? Where do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more gaming content. Feel free to click on one of the videos you see on screen right now for more fire content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video. Your boy old man Sim out. Peace.